chapter six, the thing that really matters. Mouth hangs open as you absorb what Veronica says. Richard and I are getting divorced. Your final challenge for the company is matching me. I'm sorry, Veronica. I had no idea you two were struggling. I know, dear. I wanted it that way. I didn't feel like I could admit my relationship was failing while I was uh, running a company about love. The challenge is vital. If you can find me a loving man to retire with, you'll have passed the ultimate test and earned my company. Veronica? Aren't you moving a little fast? I just don't want you to rush from one heartbreak to another. Yeah, they call them rebounds for a reason. That won't happen if you do your job correctly. That's not too much to ask, is it? I slices her voice, and you sigh, shaking your hand. Of course not. We'll get started. Veronica glances at her watch. I'm afraid that's all the time I have now. I have shareholders to meet with, clients to consult, to divorce proceedings, the works. You weren't kidding about this being the toughest challenge yet. Aren't you going to give us anything to work with? Don't worry. I haven't abandoned you. There are detailed dossiers waiting for you both on your desks. I'll expect results within the week. Oh, and one more thing. You are to work this case in secret. Nobody can know I'm getting divorced, let alone that I'm looking for love. Two's co-reputation was built on marriage to Richard. One whiff of this, and the paparazzi will eat us alive. Veronica nods and swiftly excuses herself. You share a look with Jack. Talk about a blind sign. Hmm... And that's not the only one we got this morning. Yeah, Keith and Casey. Glance at the door and then lower your voice. I don't know how they got caught, but no dating rule has consequences, Jack. That could be you and me if we do something stupid. Hmm. Look, it's fine. We aren't even dating. Jack. So what are we doing? I want to hear it with your own words. We're casually enjoying each other's comedy in a physical, intimate manner. And where's the line between that and dating? Who's gonna argue to Veronica that if we get caught and both of our jobs are on the line? In the ring, you said you wanted to be with me. I... Jack hangs his head and with a sigh. I know I did, and those weren't empty words, but look, this isn't the best place to talk about. You both spin around as the door opens. Jeremy pokes his head in and jumps when he sees you. What? What are you two doing here? We literally just had a meeting with your boss. You know we had a meeting with Veronica. What are you doing here? Jeremy harumps and strides into the room. He picks up a file on Veronica's desk. I'm fetching Veronica's paperwork for her next meeting. Thank you very much. By the way, what was your meeting about, by the way? It's confidential. Sorry, Jeremy, but Veronica's orders. Mmm, some assistant I'm being treated like. Jeremy stomps out on you and Jack share a look. Is it just me, or is one of the people Veronica's worried about snooping into her business or her own assistant? No, you're right. We'll have to keep an eye on him. And about the other thing? The us thing? Mmm, we'll talk later, I promise. He leaves Veronica's office first, and after a heavy sigh, you do the same. Later on, in your office, you and Maggie pour over the file after file. Veronica has made notes on each one, showing what she liked and hated about each, sometimes both endorsing and disqualifying them. So many options. Seriously, whose must-have list for a partner is longer than legislation? Someone with really high, stupid standards. Okay, how about this one? Successful startup founder, great sense of humor, plays tennis on the side. Uh, he's okay, but Veronica specifically banned anyone shorter than her. Really? Alright, what about this guy? He's cute, nice salt and pepper hair going, and nope, he's an introvert. Won't be able to keep up with her. Well, that's bullshit. You realize that if you, an introvert, meets the right person, did you know an introvert can keep up with even the best of them? The extrovert just has to find a way to bring that out saying. Uh, this could be so much easier if her requirements weren't contradictory. She has so many must-haves and deal-breakers that all this is deal tells us nothing. Maggie checks her phone. 
almost noon, which means Jeremy's out on his lunch run and Veronica's about to wrap up a meeting. You can head her off and ask her a few more questions. Perfect. You grab your notebook and hurry to find Veronica. A group of finely dressed business women and men walk out of a conference room after making sure the coast is clear you slip and sign. Luna, how are things going? They're going, but I was hoping to ask you a few questions to get a better idea of your perfect match. Well, very well. What would you like to know? Tell me, Veronica. How should your relationship make you feel? What do you need from a partner? What are you uh what are your absolute turn-offs? What do you need? What everyone needs from a partner, loyalty, security, and honesty. I personally need someone who can keep up with an ambitious woman. Someone who isn't intimidated or insecure with someone successful. Her phone rings and she takes it out of her pocket. If you'd excuse me, Luna, I have a phone interview with a potential client. She strides away, phone already at her ear. You stare down at your still largely empty sheet of paper. Oh, that barely got me anywhere. Or anything. Yeah, this is gonna be a tough cookie to crack. A couple hours later, after Veronica's next meeting, she barges into the hallway in a rush. Thank you all. Please address any more questions to my assistant, Jeremy, or shoot me an email later. Oh, Luna, you startled me there. You power walk to keep up with Veronica's brisk pace. Are you busy? My next meeting starts in two minutes. Did you need something to hear? About your match. What are a man's best qualities? Oh, well, I appreciate a man who's successful in his own right, but not arrogant. Here we are. Sorry, Luna, but I have to cut this conversation short. That was 12 seconds, maybe. At best. You said two minutes. And with that, she darts into her next meeting and shuts the door. You sigh as you hear her greeting her clients. This is so not working. Why'd you pair her with Jack? Like, seriously. <laughs> You slump back down at your desk and let out a groan. Oh wait, I forgot he's here. Okay, never mind. Veronica has no time. Not only does it she make it in her make it impossible to talk to, but also how is she still functioning? Maybe that's how you get when you get her alone. I convince her to take a breather and get out of the office for a bit. Like a spa day. You could use a break too, Lena. You and Veronica are both overachievers and under self carers. I'm not arguing, but do you really think I could convince her to step out, out for a few hours? I think she'll appreciate having someone looking out for her, especially since she's uh, going through a divorce. And uh, once you get closer to her, she'll open up about more of what she's looking for in a partner. Yeah, okay, you're right. Let's see if I can make this happen. A little while later, you head into her office. You poke your head inside and find her rubbing her eyes tiredly. Oh, Luna, I'm so sorry for running away from you all day. Things to do, you know how it is. Veronica. How do the words Jasmine Body Wrap Italian Hot Rock Massage sound to you? Goodness, they sound fantastic and while I appreciate what you're suggesting, unfortunately I'm backed up all day with meetings. I'm chained to my desk until dinner. Convince her. Diamond choice. Listen, you need a spa day. Not to overstep or anything, but you're the boss around here. Get those meetings wait for you. You're about to retire. Is this really the time to neglect self-care? You know, it is wonderful to have somebody remind me of that. He calls Jeremy into her office. Jeremy, reschedule the rest of my meetings for the day I'm out of the office. But, but, but! Rika rises from her chair and strides out of the door after waving you along. You enter the dimly lit spa with Veronica. You faintly hear the sound of trickling water over the rocks and gentle harp music. First things first, I signed us up for that full body wrap, followed by massages and then time in the sauna. I'm impressed with your taste, Luna. I've had this spawn on my radar, but life got in the way. Let me tell you, divorce proceedings are a havoc on the skin. I bet. In that case, let's not waste any more time pampering you. You and Veronica change into your towels and settle into your respective tables. Your asthesians massage a sweet-smelling scrub on your body, pressing gently in your back. Mm. You stare at the floor as you try to think of ways to bring up the divorce. So, this is nice. I can't remember the last time I had a spa day. You can skip the small talk, Luna. What? I don't... I know you invited me to ask about my divorce. I've only 
been hesitant to tell you more because, well, we haven't built up that sort of trust. I don't know you the way I know someone like Jack. So in a way, you've kind of set up us to failure because Jack was going to do a better job. Well, I genuinely care. I was going to ask about your divorce, but it's because I care about you as a person. I would never use your situation against you in any way. I hope you can trust that. With all the press vultures, and it's hard to believe someone actually cares. But I've seen the way you work with clients. And I know you're being sincere. I appreciate that. I don't want you to tell me anything you're uncomfortable uh, sharing. But if uh, you want to talk, maybe it would help both of us. That's fair. There are some details that are too tender to reveal. But if I might... If I trust you with my company, I should trust you with my story. I'm known for a while that Richard no longer enjoys doing the things with me, like going to the opera. Uh, when we were younger, he was such a romantic that part of him faded. So romantic, opera, which opera can be uh, nice and soothing sometimes. Even romantic, depending on the opera, you see. As Veronica opens up, the massage concludes and you make your way to the Manny Petty stations. Veronica picks up a bottle, comes and nail polish, turning it over in her hands as she speaks. Of course, I wanted him to plan our retirement together, but at some point I settled for planning it myself and hoping he'd simply share it with me. I hoped, perhaps foolishly, that at some point he would regain interest in me, in our life. A manicurist leads you both to the chairs next to each other. Veronica grips the nail, red nail polish, so hard the glass might burst. It didn't work this hard to be treated as an afterthought, so divorce lawyers were called. So she jumped the gun. Interesting. <laughs> That's horrible. What else did you have in common before her? The manicurist takes your polish choices and begins prepping your hands for the sweet-smelling lotion. Our romance, our ambitions, always went hand in hand. The dark side of it, that is, he was never satisfied, both in work and in love. He wanted honeymoon phase after honeymoon phase. Richard and I built two go together. We never wanted children, so the company is our legacy. He handled the books while I ever saw the matching. I was head over heels for his ambition. We spent countless nights doing business planning over a bottle of wine. That sounds like an amazing project to have a partnership over. It was. It was goal-oriented. He... You wouldn't call him a touchy-feely. I thought you said he was romantic. He took me on beautiful dates and was a master at romantic gestures, but he wasn't that what you'd call nurturing. I sometimes wish he was, but the other men I dated who were nurturing were never ambitious enough. So when did things get bad? After Two's Co. became established, Richard did what he always did. He got bored. How can anyone get bored of his, this job? He found a way. I tried to tolerate his gambling, his going out and not returning until the next day. I woke up the night one morning and realized we'd spoken two words to each other for the first, for the last two days. That was it. Oh, my God. Why did you put up with him for so long? Remember... I will say this. There are always two sides to a story. Just saying. I mean, this didn't just happen suddenly overnight. If he's been getting worse, why stay with him? Or confront him, even. It seems like you tolerated it for a while. Veronica's eyes, a bitter laugh escaping her. Because we didn't we don't listen to common sense when we're in love. When you care for someone and invest years into being with them, you forgive more than you should. And yet you shouldn't. So you always hope things would get better. I had out hope he'd finally pull himself out of the mud and meet the man I fell in love with. But you didn't let him know he was going down a downward spiral path. See, I'm looking at both sides of this. You and Veronica quietly ponder her situation as your nails dry, thick silence hanging between you. To think that I even tolerated... One... She looks at you, and the fight deflates from her. She offers you a tired, forceful smile. Never mind, I shouldn't speak of it. It won't change anything. It'll ruin this lovely time we're having. We're having a lovely time? More like we're talking about your divorce. 
<laughs> if this is a lovely time, holy shit. You've been through so much, and to do all this, the whole, the whole running a company and keeping a spotless public image, uh, it's impressive, really. She looks you over, an improving smirk covering her lips. This has been cleansing in more ways than one. You have a good instinct for what people need, Luna. It bodes well for your future. Let's see first if it bodes well for your future. You join Maggie at the stockyard later, with the energy you can only get from hours of pampering. We need to clean up Veronica's must-have list. Sorry, I didn't mean to get ketchup on it. The bottle just kind of exploded. What? That's not what I'm talking- Here. You sit down next to her, pulling out the must-have list. It's simple. She's still so raw about Richard hurting her. She's upped her standards by about 10,000. So theoretically, there's a lot of stuff on this list that she doesn't actually care about. So if we just match based on traits that really matter, then she'll have a great connection, no matter what. Okay. Would it be out of line to go, why don't we go talk to her ex? And get his story. Maybe, since they had all this time together and everything else, and they kind of just fell out because of lack of communication, which is sorely needed in any relationship, maybe you might be able to rekindle the love that they have. Benji trots happily out of the kitchen, scampering up to your school and putting his front paws on the rungs. What's that? You want to help me matchmake too? You scoop Benji up and plop him in your lap, holding a matches portfolio to him. What do you think, Popo? Is uh, this one a good match for Veronica? And she sniffs the paper, her ears flopping forward curiously. Before he sneezes all over him. Uh, you know, you're right. His job isn't interesting enough. Good work. It's okay, so obviously things are... Uh, like, hand size or arbitrary, and we can cut those out, but that still leaves a lot of traits on the list. Mm, Veronica loved Richard's ambition, at least before it consumed his life. She wishes she could feel more nurtured right now, and of course, shockingly, nobody, the owner um, of the matchmaking firm, wants someone romantic to sweep her off her feet. Well, let's take a look at the list that's left. You're about to build Veronica's date? for tonight. Choose wisely, because you can only pick three traits. Veronica wants someone who is nurturing. The woman has been neglected by Rex for who knows how long. She needs to remember how good it feels to be cared for. She wants romantic. Veronica runs a matchmaking company. Her whole life is romance. It's time someone to for someone to make her feel as special as all of her clients feel. And finally, ambitious. Just because Veronica's retiring doesn't mean she's gonna dream less big. She needs someone who can dream big with her. Alright, let's uh, sort the matches by just focusing on those three treats. You get to work excitedly combing through the clients. It doesn't take long until you find someone who checks all the boxes. Hello, Damien. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, we're going to try this one. All right, Damien. I hope you're ready to give us a win. All we need now is a perfect date to seal the deal. Well, Veronica mentioned the opera while we were at the spa. What's playing at the Met right now? And it looks like they're performing the special revival of Rigoletto. I can get some private box tickets for Veronica and Damien. Throw in one more ticket for me. I want to make sure everything stays smooth as silk on this day. Oh, and if you're going to the opera, that means you need a pretty dress. I know just the place. And before Jack tags along, oh no. Maggie leads you into a fancy dress boutique and skims through the racks until she gasps with joy. It's perfect. Spectacular! Oh my god, I've never seen a dress this pretty before. Diamond choice. It's not a bad dress. It's very interesting. It looks like a, like a tulip in a way. She's like out of the stall and Maggie covers her mouth with both hands. Oh, shut up. You look like a movie star. 
Um, I might have to make up excuses to go to the opera more often if it'll uh, if I'll be looking like this. All right, I'll take care of contacting Damien. Can you take care of uh, getting opera tickets? Can do. Victory is right around the corner. Two days later, you smooth down the dress in the lobby of the Metropolitan Opera, where Veronica will arrive for a date with Damien. There they are. Damien holds open the door for Veronica to enter first. After you. My thank you. Okay, that's not bad. I can work with this. As they wait in front of the stage doors, Damien wraps an arm around Veronica's shoulders. Are you alright? I know you were feeling anxious about being uh, on, on scene on a date under such complicated circumstances. I'm... Thank you for asking. I was worried there might be press, but we're in the clear. I feel fine now. An awkward silence settles between them. They take turns glancing uncertainly at each other when the other isn't looking. So, do you attend the opera often? I... Sure, when a good show's in season. They need help opening up. There must be something I can do to get them relaxed. I'm going to... Give them a fun icebreaker. You flag down a waiter, handing a generous tip and whispering to her. She nods and disappears, reappearing later with what you asked for. What's this? Slips of paper. She and Damien exchange a look for taking two pieces of paper from the tray. It says you hitchhike across all of Europe in just a month. How did you manage that? Well, I was a much younger man. Still too dumb to learn from my mistakes. As he tells the story, the tension from before seems to dispel itself. Phew, I seem to be really jiving now. The doors open to the stage, and you give Veronica and Damien one last look before taking your seat. As you settle in your private box, you can't help glancing at the next box over to check how Veronica and Damien are doing. And Damien plucks the rose from his lapel and tucks it into her hair. It's nice, nice little gesture. Damien takes her hand and kisses it, and when they turn back to the stage, they're nestled closer together. Yes! Relax, you can't stare them into doing anything. Oh god damn it, I was right again! Your mouth falls open as Jack walks into your box with a sly grin. Jack, how did you know I was here? Jack takes a seat next to your box, uh, yours in the box, flashing his ticket at you, your brows furrowing for confusion before you read the name on the ticket. Jeremy, how did he know I'd be here? Mm, I saw him tailing Maggie to the box office, waiting around until uh, he wasn't paying attention, and then nicked his ticket. That slimy creep, if he'd figured out Veronica was here on a date. You shake your head, not wanting to imagine all the things that could have gone wrong. Anyway, crisis averted. Thank you. Hmm. And I got a free opera ticket. I can't say I have anything to complain about. Yeah, yeah, I'll turn a blind eye to your theft this time. Anyway, how are you doing with a client like Veronica? Hmm. I've already got her signed up on three dates, so I can't say I'm too worried about Damien over there. <sighs> You're an asshole, aren't you? You'll burn her out with too many dates. She's getting divorced. What if you give her miss after miss and she gets fed up with you? And she swears off love for the rest of her life. <laughs> it's cute, you think I'll have three misses in a row. It's, uh, it's that impossible, huh? With my track record, you bet it is. I just don't want her to get hurt. Take a lot, Sada. Hmm. Reaches to put a hand on your knee. Be careful with the heart of yours, Luna. It's gonna get in the way if you're not car careful. You sound like you're speaking from experience. He lets out a laugh that sounds a little forced, then changes the subject. So, been to the opera before? You look stunning, by the way. Gotta be careful looking that good. How do you expect anyone to keep their eyes on the stage? Maybe I don't want you looking at the stage. He traces a finger over your knee, making you shiver. Hmm, maybe I won't. You look out over the theater, feeling a sense of peace settle into you. I love stages. When I was young, my mom would get off work early, and get last-minute rush tickets to the cheapest show she could find. It didn't matter if it was a big Broadway musical or a little up-and-coming play, I loved each one, and I loved seeing them all with her. Adorable. Why'd you stop going with your folks? 
um, my mom got cancer, passed away when I was 10. I'm sorry you had to go through them. That must have been rough. It still, it was, it still is, depending on the day, but I try not to dwell on it. I know it won't bring her back. Jeez, my parents' messy divorce looks like a romantic comedy next to that. Your parents divorced? Why did they break up? It's not an original story. Mom was overworked. Dad wasn't pulling his weight. She found out he sank us in debt. We almost lost the flower shop. She, uh, well, he left pretty quick after that. I used to blame my mom for it. I used to blame me, too. Anyone but his stupid ass. You can't blame yourself for something like that. I'm glad I wised up soon enough to make a, a good relationship with my parents uh, that I have. I'm sorry, Jack. Eh, it's fine. It's... For a moment, he meets your eyes, the most open and vulnerable you've seen. And the next moment, he shakes his head, returning to Loof Grin. Not the end of the world, you know. Besides, you came here to focus on Veronica, not to get the rundown on Jack's sad childhood. Maybe I came here to watch an opera, and you're distracting me. <sighs> Curtain's still closed, and we both know I'm the most interesting thing around until the show starts. Oh, there's that ego and arrogance. Jack... I mean, it does strike me as an opera person. What? But I'm all decked out in the finery and everything. I'm so an opera person. Oh, I'll bet you 50 bucks you won't be able to sit still for more than five minutes. Make it 10. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's, it's true. I'll admit it. I wanted to spend time with you. I'm not ashamed to say so. And for free. Oh, come on. Like, it cost you anything to be in my company anyways? You elbow him and the two of you laugh as Jack's laughter slowly fades away, looks down at the stage with a thoughtful expression. You know, there's a reason I don't go at all on a lot of dates. Why well, I don't follow my matchmaking philosophy in my own love life. You're surprised to hear him speaking so candidly and you don't dare interrupt, he continues in a quiet voice. I guess my parents' divorce really stuck with me. I remember how painful it was for my mom to go through that. It made me cautious, and I want to open myself up to a possibility of uh, that type of pain. That makes sense. You've seen firsthand how love can end up bitter and ugly. Yup. Love should be beautiful. The magic spark that endures. I want to make sure before I commit to someone that they're worth it. He holds your gaze for a charge moment. The lights go down for the in the theater, and the orchestral music starts up as the curtain opens. You reach over and take his hand in yours. Then he laces his fingers with yours, a soft smile on his face. What are you doing, Luna? I don't know. Does everything have to have a deep meaning? Jack chuckles and looks towards the stage, but a few minutes later, you jump as you feel his breath against your ear. You're not really into this opera, are you? It's been two minutes, dude! Depends on why you're asking. He pushes up a sleeve to check his watch and grins. Uh, something I want to show you. Something I think you'll like, but uh, we don't have much time. You're asking me to sneak out of the opera. Would you expect anything less of me at this point? I know how to make your night, I promise. Diamond choice. Okay, impress me. But this better be worth it. Mm, of course it will be. You're with me. Beck leads you across the lobby with a purposeful stride, but not towards the exit. Wait, we're not leaving the Opera House? What's the plan? First, we have to get through there. He points at a staircase that's been partioned off, and Usher stands guard in front of him. Alright, sneaking somewhere we shouldn't. I should have known this was on the itinerary. Jack shoots you a wing, tangling his fingers with yours. Do you trust me? <clears throat> Against my better judgment. Hmm, that's what I like to hear. He releases your fingers as you approach the stairs and stops in front of the usher with a confident grin. Hello, my good sir, my associate and I need to go upstairs. We were sent an email with the details. I'm sorry, but this is airy, is off limits, and I don't remember any emails. It must have been passed down to all the staff. Luna, why don't you explain why we're here? Zach turns to your laughter in his eyes and you paste on a grin. <clears throat> we're celebrity handlers running an errand. 
for Chris Winters Aids. He's looking for filming locations to shoot some ads uh, for his up and coming uh, line of uh, hats for summertime. Nice hats. Oh my god, you work with Chris Winters? What's he like? Oh, he's great, everything you imagine. Humble, kind, but he doesn't like to be kept waiting, and uh, we have a whole bunch of places to scout up tonight. Right, right, go on ahead. Just tell him Julian's his biggest fan. And the usher steps aside, and you and Jack start up the stairs. We could have talked about that more ahead of time, you know. And we didn't. You gave us a great cover, I backed you up. Teamwork! That's right there. You can't get through life like an improv class. I don't know. It's gone pretty well for me so far. <laughs> he tugs on your hand, taking the stairs two at a time. You feel your heart thunder in your chest as you struggle to keep up. What's the rush for? But instead of answering, he pulls you through a door and you gasp at the sight before you. The sun sets over the city, covering everything in a soft golden glow. It's beautiful. Mm, sure is. Glance over and your breath catches when you find his eyes are on you. Before you know it, what you're doing, you grab his face and seal your lips to his. You feel a surprise before he kisses you back eagerly and his arms go around your waist to hold you close. You're being a lot nicer to me tonight than usual. And you're being a lot more romantic than usual. Shut up, you jerk. I could say the same for you. Through you rest your head on his shoulder and look back out over the rooftops. You know, I've seen a sunset before, right? Mm, sure, you haven't seen one through your, my eyes. Ooh, get all like manic on me, Jack. Yeah, yeah, it's a point of all this, I promise. He lets out a breath, and his voice is softer as he continues. After my parents got divorced, my mom went through a tough time. I wanted to be able to do something, and the little me thought, hey, I'll cook for her. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, I was cute when I tried. And I made can vina sausage and boxed mac of cheese work. I'm sure your mom loved that. Hey, listen, have you ever tried mac and cheese and spam? Yeah, that's right. I got better over time, but that's not the important part. Mom loves the sunset, so every Friday night I cooked dinner, and then we ate out on our tiny terrace and watched the sun go down. For a long time, that was the only time I saw her relax and smile like a real smile. You hug Jack a little tighter, feeling the warmth of his body. She's lucky to have you. And I'm lucky to have her. She gave me some advice, you know. She said to me, Jack, sunset's a special time, so you have to share it with people that are special to you. Thank you for sharing this with me. The story and the sunset. Hmm, I figured it was only fair. I got a free opera ticket, I uh, have to give you something in return. I'm not the one who gave you the ticket, you don't owe me anything. Hmm, stop blowing holes in my excuse. Just admit that I'm special to you. He cups your cheeks, fondness and admiration barely restrained in his eyes. He pries forward and kisses lips and he hungers back eagerly and hungrily. I want you, Luna. Now, what if ushers come up? Breaking rules, that means worrying about the consequences when they happen. He presses you against the wall, your arms clasp around uh, in the back of his neck, then you draw him closer. In that case, I do remember you saying this would be worth my while. He ducks to kiss your neck, his fingers gripping your hips tightly. Mm. Let him have his control. You tip your head back, biting your lip as his warm mouth. Tongue pressed against your neck, encourages the neckline of your dress down, kissing a trail to your breast. A jack. As lovely as this dress is, I think I'd prefer you without it. Also, the dress didn't even go to her neck, so I'm just throwing that out there. He pulls your skirt up and hikes your leg up. You suppress a whimper of pleasure when you feel him press against you. Yes. There we go. He rocks against you, sucking in a sharp breath, when you suddenly hear a voice call from the stairs. You two still up there? It's been a while. Crap. 
Jack takes a steady breath and calls back. Uh, we're just finishing up. Thank you. As the usher's footsteps recede, the two of you catch your breath and you pout at Jack. Finishing up. Boo. He strokes your cheek, drawing you in for another deep kiss. He murmurs against your lips. You know what they say, delayed gratification is the best gratification. Whoever they are, they're crazy. You get steamy with Jack at the opera. As the two of you sit back down in your seats in the theater, Jack takes your hand in his. We can pick up where we left off. Veronica's in the next box. Pay attention to the show. Also, that ten minutes thing. Yeah, no, he didn't pay attention for ten minutes. He, yep, couldn't sit still. A grinning, Jack settles back, and you get engrossed in the opera's actors belt across the theater with impressive range. As the show ends, you see Damien and Veronica stand and head back towards the lobby. You get up to follow them. You watch from the stairs as Damien and Veronica exchange some banter at the front of the lobby. I must say, Veronica, I really admire an aunt, uh, in surprising woman like yourself. I imagine you'll have an exciting retirement, Ed. That's the plan. Margaritas are grand, but it's getting uh, your hands dirty. I gave you. I may be retired, but I've actually been investing in a number of food trucks across the city. It gives people a start on their dreams while keeping up with business trends. That sounds exciting. I'd love to hear more. Damien stops short of the door, sovereign Veronica's arm. Shall I call a cab for us? I know an excellent place where we can grab a bite to eat. Please, I'm famished. As they leave arm in arm, you turn towards Jack. Mm, round one goes to me, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. One successful date doesn't mean marriage. I think Veronica will need more time. Mm, good thing she'll be seeing my first match in a few days, then. Oh, game on, Jack. Oh, I love it when you look at me with that fire in your eyes. Jack takes your hand, and you head out to the curb together, where he calls the two of you a taxi. The next morning, Veronica calls you in her office, sprite and early. Hey boss, did you enjoy your evening? <laughs> I take your date with Damien went well last night. Oh, he was lovely, darling, romantic, suave, caring. Really ticked all the boxes. It was the best date I've had and not been on in ages. So when's the next one? Oh, um, I haven't set one up yet. Well, that won't do. Jack's got me booked nearly all next week. Don't tell me you're losing steam already. No, just kind of woke in this morning, you know, you know, walked in, was like, hey, boss. And then you're like, when's the next day? When's the next day? When's the next day? Okay, calm down. Okay, yeah, yeah, next, yeah, find out in the next one. Okay, calm down. Damn. <laughs> Without further ado, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down the description below, links to social media, Discord, and if you'd like to support me and this channel, be greatly appreciated. Um, if you're feeling up for it and want to support, the, you know, the work that I do of over 3,600 videos, the countless hours of streaming and entertaining and everything else I do, it would be greatly appreciated, you know, if you want to help support the channel. Supporting it is a variety of means, like I said, sharing it, subscribing, um, you know, an active community really helps a content creator and really helps the community grow so again consider sharing this channel considering consider sharing the content again i work really hard um sometimes painfully so and uh, i just you know want this community to be the the best that uh, there is i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest i want an awesome community so without further ado thanks all for watching love your beautiful faces and i'll catch you all next time peace out